program, um, what is it called, and um, and what age groups uh, are represented in that program? Who participates? Well, I am a teacher in a K to three school, and I teach grade two, which is uh, grade uh, ages seven, seven and eight year olds. What is the aim of your program, from your perspective? Well, currently, it is we're in the middle of a curriculum uh, restructuring at the provincial level. But as it stands right now, I try to infuse Indigenous education uh, throughout the entire curriculum, LA to uh, social studies and math, to try and bring my experiences in to uh, help students understand and learn more about um, not just, you know, Cree culture, but um, a lot of indigenous cultures. Okay. So would you say then it's sort of to pass on um, more than just one goal or objective with, in, with, with respect to that? Uh, my, my main goal is to, is to have students that are indigenous see themselves in everyday society because we've, always, we've been exempted in Western education in the past. So I want them to feel uh, that, that we have always been here and we always had our own way of living. The different indigenous cultures have you know, similar, similar beliefs uh, but yet we, we live different ways as well, so I want them to recognize when, when it's their culture that they have something to bring to the table. And uh, we were always part of Canada's fabric. We should have never been excluded. Can you please describe some of the different activities maybe that the program, in the program that the participants are involved in? Well, our curriculum itself has uh, has an indigenous focus uh, on the Inuit, but I try to incorporate more uh, into language arts, uh, reading, using using books, using books from indigenous authors, uh, and I use indigenous art a lot because um, a lot of our students are very artistic, um, and then um, and then with science you know the the ways we used materials in our in our environment to for survival for medicines i will try and introduce things like that so that they can recognize that how big of an impact we actually had on society do you does that involve bringing in other people from the community i have well? i have brought in other people i, I mostly my parents who um, my dad has has knowledge about ways of, of, of indigenous medicine, and uh, while he's not necessarily practices it, um, he does have knowledge about it, and he'll share that knowledge. What was, you know, what what, you know, lichens were used for, or, or you know, to heal things, heal people, or uh, even weather. What the weather's like, because we do weather in, at this age. So what, the, like the calendar, the indigenous calendars, how, how we, you know, learned about the passage of time and stuff. Um, some of the trickster stories, like Wisaki Chak and stuff like that. I'll get that from my mom and dad. I'll just ask them because they're really, they retained a lot of that information from, from their growing up, even though they went through the residential school system. They mm-hmm. still remember that stuff from their parents and their grandparents. So it's still valuable. Mm-hmm. So then how would you say that, um, do you see, like measure the success of a, of the program that you're that you're utilizing there that you're bringing in or infusing into the curriculum? My measure of success for my students is their sense of belonging in the classroom and into their school, because a lot of times mm-hmm. we get kids who who don't see themselves, don't see their their pictures of students like them around the room or in the cl- or in the halls or in the schools. And now they're getting to see that more and there's more acceptance of themselves that, hey, I belong to this place. This just isn't for, for you know, other cultures. I belong here too. And so they feel, they feel important and that should always have been that way. So do you see a difference then in your students um, at the end of, like, you know, uh, you know, as the year progresses? And can you describe to me maybe how they are different? I, I see them 
blossom as academic learners, especially in their reading, because I, I'm a literacy expert as well. So because I can bring it, I bring in like indigenous uh, folk content books that they're looking at reading books and stories about people like them themselves and their culture. So then they, they, they just sense of pride that they hold their heads higher and they, they speak with, use their voices and they don't, they don't hide what they know. And, and, um, when they see, you know, they see me as a role model. So then they're like, Hey, maybe I could do that too. Cause I've had students come back and say, you know what, I want to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. So if one measure of success is like um, enrollment, for example, is enrollment increasing? Uh, like is the demand for, the, for maybe even your class higher than, like do more kids want to come into your class? Or I haven't necessarily experienced a demand for, you know, especially Indigenous parents to have their kids come to my classes because I don't believe they know that they can, they can ask for that. They can advocate for, for for myself. I mean, I do have, I do get a lot anyway. And uh, and some of the first things when I meet the parents and the parents come in, the smiles on the parents' faces when they see uh, that I am indigenous, that they are just so happy mm -hmm. because they know that their child's going to be in a safe place. And uh, it still doesn't necessarily mean that they that they are. Um, still attending school every day mm -hmm. but a majority of my students do attend a, a school and you know they, uh, eventually they're they you could hear them telling uh you know their parents I love my teacher I love going to school where when they start out they're they're not so vocal so if you were to have some form of evaluation of uh, what you're doing in your classroom what feedback do you receive um I have, uh, like, I support a lot of teachers in my school. I provide them with resources. I point them in the direction of, of um, where they can find resources or locate maybe a certain topic that they're looking for. Well, maybe look at it this way. Maybe you could do this, use this book this way. Mm -hmm. uh, but I always encourage them to, if they find a book and they're like, I want to use this in my class, how am I going to use this? And, uh, and I'll ask, first of all, where is this, where is this culture uh, located in Canada? What, who are the people? Because I don't want them going around thinking we're all the same culture. We are not painted with one brush. We're all different. So first of all, identify where this, you know, this group of people, where the story originates. And then, and then see how it will go from there. Because, you know, I think we should be reading Cree stories to Cree students and, you know, if there's materials for, for, for the beaver or for the Dene, that we should be reading those stories to the region that they belong to. Because uh, a lot of books in our, we have right now are all about dream catchers and stuff. And as far as I understand, our, there in our area, that wasn't traditional to our area. But it doesn't mean we can't learn about it. It just means make sure you identify where the material is from before you just say, just assume we all do the same what challenges have you faced and how have you overcome them to make your program <coughs> a success? You know what I mean? Like uh, mm -hmm. to make it work and, and how you see it coming to fruition. The challenges I find is finding enough materials, mm -hmm. especially for our high level area. You know, there's not a lot of materials on the Deneta, their own made materials for here. There's not uh, even a lot of Cree stuff for, for this area. So what, what we're doing is I look for stuff that is Cree-based, mm -hmm. and then I, I apply it to, you know, where the Cree people that I come from, how are they similar, and then... But then I'll teach that in comparison as well, that Cree people here, this is, a, this is what we do, but the Cree people in this area do that. So that's how I try to work around that. Mm -hmm. But in general, I just want them to understand that we are different. We are different in our, in our, in our own groups, so we, we might change up, and just so that they can develop critical thinking, you know, about, you know, the, the different cultures across, across Canada and across the world. My question now is from your perspective, what is Indigenous education? For me, Indigenous education is, it's teaching about our people and how we, had, we, we should have always been included in the formation of Canada, especially teaching it to to non non-indigenous people, that mm -hmm. it's almost like we were just 
we were just wiped wiped away and it owned oh, there were aren't there weren't any people to start with so i think you know when we teach our child the children that that they see themselves in in society that we are not on the on the outside we are right in it and mm-hmm. we should always be in it and that we have a voice and i think that's what indigenous education does it's an, it's an equalizer for for us it has it you know equalized my standing in in society so like you talked a lot about literacy um because it's something that's really important to you so if we were to sp- focus on that specific area in indigenous education um have you already communicated to me then what that looks like as for your students in your program I don't like I use indigenous re- resources when I can get them mm-hmm. but generally they get uh they also get a lot of just regular you know mainstream uh <clears throat> trade trade books and stuff that that are available mm-hmm. but I will use those to incorporate uh, if if it applies to something in in my life my, my to my culture I will also that's where I you can do the infusion Mm-hmm. is when you're reading a book and you and because we're, we're storytellers we're, we're you know our background is our old traditions that that could be a jumping off point for something in my life or something I've learned about you know an indigenous culture being like hey you know they you could do this with that mm-hmm. and uh, and lead off into that because I also want them to understand that we do have you know our own histories that our families have that we should be telling this and the big difference between that I've noticed with working with a lot of non-indigenous people mm-hmm. is that that I I am a storyteller the way I've learned is through stories and that our children learn very well through that and so that's what I try to use for literacy they come from that tradition and we just got to apply that to reading and then you know because they're related if they don't have that language based learning first it's hard for them to 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 have you know learn to read but I I get to, you know we get a lot of good results with you know the programming i have in place. Awesome. Um my last question then is uh, what is your vision for indigenous education say over the next 10 years um so like you know uh for our people uh what would you like to see achieved or progress that you hope will be made? Well as a as a professional in my building i belong to like a division wide program which is called an FNMI cohort. and my intention was always to teach others <coughs> to to know know where to look for things and how to go about this um and what in, what indigenous perspective or in culture things like that <coughs> how, how to do that even if i'm not there because i think that's i think that's what our goal is is you know for my parents you know they teach you all those all the things to be you know that that good person you should be so that when they're not around you continue to be that person i think we need to do that with our indigenous education if we get the resources developed if we get you know we get in contact with elders that we're we're passing on and teaching our next generation how to do this themselves and that's a you know that's that's what we used to do with our cultural teachings as uh, indigenous people and and that got lost from the residential schools so people think they don't have it but we do have it it hasn't lost you just you just got to find it